Welcome to EduNation and Pathway Program Introduction to Economics. My name is Ilari Franzi and I will be introducing this course to you. And this course covers the fundamentals of economics and the basic features of micro and macroeconomics. You will also learn some basic concepts of economics in this course such as demand and supply, markets, economic growth, employment and inflation. After completing this course, you are expected to understand the basic concepts of economics, the basic features of micro and macroeconomics. You are expected to be able to analyze different economic systems. You are also expected to understand the operation of markets and the price mechanism. In addition, you are expected to understand the behavior of households, firms and the government as well as individuals and you are expected to be able to uh, apply economic analysis in the current economic events. And the modes of study for this course are pre-recorded lectures and learning videos, written and drawn assignments, case studies, quizzes and final essay. All of these modes will be on the Clannet platform where you can track your progress and we can assess you as well and all of the material will be accessible from this platform. Uh, the assessment will be from 1 to 5 and the grade will base 50% on the uh, course assignments during the progression of the course and 50% on the final essay that is the last assignment of this course. And our course literature is the core the economy book that has many authors to it and is a really good book not only because it's freely uh, available online but it, because it's very well written and it has also uh, exercises online available for free. So uh, we have this book as our course literature and you can also buy this book from the site if you like. So let's jump into it and get to the introduction to the study of the economics. So economics is really all about scarcity of resources. So we have limited resources in this world. We, we might have some goods that are limited. Let's say we have clothing or food or houses that are limited. Not everybody will have these things because of our system uh, that is not perfect. Uh, and thus this creates the problem of using these resources. So how do we use these resources? What kind of decisions do we take uh, to use these resources so that it is beneficial either for yourself or for your, um, let's say, your uh, family or your community or your, the society? So it is all about human decisions regarding these scarce resources and the consequences that follow of making these decisions. And economists study uh, both the individuals, firms and uh, um, families, but they also study the large economy. And the study that is about families, individuals and firms is the study of microeconomics. It means it studies the small units of the economy. The study of these units is called microeconomics. And then we have the large economy that, that covers the, the government, the, the central banks, all of the people, all of the businesses in this, in this area or in this country, and also the foreign trade, so the trade abroad uh, that also affects the, the aggregate, the whole economy. So micro for the small and macro for the large. Now that we understand the very basics of the study of the economics, we can jump into our module about capitalist uh, revolution and the capitalist system that has changed the economics of the world to the direction that it is now. So in both in positive and in negative. So we, we will study uh, the history of the capitalist revolution and also the capitalist system and compare it with different economic systems. 
First of all, you can acquaint yourself with the, with the lecture material. So, capitalist revolution started in the 17th century when private property and firms emerged. And this meant that the markets would guide the economy. So it meant that if there was demand for something, there would be more suppliers for that. If there was less demand for something, there wouldn't be so many suppliers. If there was something very valuable uh, that could be traded with high profits, then that would be traded more than something of very low value in the market. So this meant that the markets would guide uh, traders' behaviors and trade would be by free will. So people could trade whatever they wanted to trade uh, with different companies and different individuals, consumers, and they would gain a private profit for these things. So one major contributor to this uh, capitalist revolution was advances in technology that also happened during the Industrial Revolution, where the production of different goods was facilitated exponentially. So it meant that many many products now could be produced at a much higher rate with much lower costs because you would not need as many maybe as many workers as you, as you needed before because this technology allowed factories to be much more effective in their production. So then when the supply was greater and and so on then this also encouraged uh, more specialization. So you had to specialize in something in order to gain a market share. So now that you know the very basics of uh, the capitalist system and, and how it emerged, you can read two chapters on the book. So you can read about the capitalist revolution and you can also read about the capitalist system and its benefits and its uh, downsides on that article and then we're going to go to a quiz uh, where you have to answer a set of questions uh, with the correct uh, multiple choice answer and once you have passed this quiz you can move to the next module and our next module is about supply and demand supply and demand is a very basic concept of ec economics so it means that when a product is supplied at a certain price, there is only a certain amount of demand for that price. When a product is supplied at a lower price, there is a higher demand for that product. It means that whenever we have a certain price, there is a certain demand for that price. There is also a certain willingness to supply this product at that price because that price will provide the owners and uh, the business a higher profit. So that's why they would like to supply something with a high price. Let's say we have an apple that we want to supply with $5. But there is nobody willing to buy the apple with $5. So you got to reduce the price to meet the demand. Maybe the demand is at $1 instead of $5. So then when you lower the price to $1, you can actually sell the apples. So while the supply, when the price is high, there is a willingness to supply this product at high quantities. When the price is high, the demand is very low. But when the price is low, the demand is very high. Of course, this doesn't apply to all products. It doesn't apply to all services, but it can give you a basic idea how the, how the markets work. If the price is high, there is less demand. If the price is low, there is more demand. If the price is high, people want to sell that product. But if the price is low, they don't want to sell it because they won't make a great profit out of it. They won't benefit from the sale. Now you can read an article about supp supply and demand and get a bit more in depth in this concept. And after this, you can watch a video that broadens your picture a bit more about the supply and demand uh, curves and also their uh, challenges of uh, illustrating what really happens in the reality, because this, this is a simplification. 
uh, and it cannot explain everything. But as you read these articles, you understand uh, what kind of uh, factors affect these curves and what they can tell to us about the supply and demand of a product. Supply and demand uh, can meet at a certain point where they are in balance and this is called an equilibrium point where the price is right for the market to buy this thing and the quantity provided is right for this quantity to have the demand it needs to have and the supply that it needs to have to satisfy the market. Okay, now after you have studied these things, we have an assignment for you and there, here is a chart that you have to read the prices and the quantities and after this you're going to have to draw the graph uh, for supply and demand for this product. So once you have drawn that graph, you can do it by hand. I, use, I recommend using a ruler if you if you're going to draw it by hand, you can draw it also in, uh, in PowerPoint, Excel, you can draw it in Open Office Calculator, you can draw it in uh, um, Apple Numbers, any of these programs you can draw it in and you can sub submit that drawing to us with the correct numbers. But make sure that you have the numbers on your diagram so we know how to read that diagram. So this is after you have submitted this uh, supply and demand um, exercise you can move to perfect competition uh, versus monopolistic or monopoly um, situation. So we are then going to go take a look at, look at price takers and price setters. So some firms are price takers, they have to take the market price, they cannot uh, control it. Some firms can set the price because they have differentiated their products or they are protected by the state to, for their service or, or their service or their product so they can actually set the price for themselves. So after you have read this article and uh, completed the quiz about that, then you can move on to the next module. And our next module is about the behavior of different firms in the market and different people in the market and we try to explain this with game theory and game theory is a simplification again of different behaviors in the market. We cannot apply game theory in, uh, in all situations but game theory can explain some uh, strategic, rational self-benefit seeking and rewarding like materially rewarding behavior in the market. So game theory is, is about players who unknowingly or knowingly they can also be knowingly interacting with, with each other in the market but they act in the same market so one's actions affect the other ones. To understand game theory uh, in greater depth we will have an article, a chapter in our, in our book that you, you need to read and we have a case study also in this book. When you have studied this case study, you can go ahead and complete a quiz about this case study. And so we can see what you have grasped and what you should go back to and see how it is really in this theory. So this theory doesn't really cover everything, but this theory can help us explain some of the basic behaviors in the market by the firms and by some self-benefit seeking individuals. Okay, which is a uh, part of uh, human behavior in the market anyway. After the game theory, we will go to the larger picture of economy, uh, the economic fluctuations, so upturn, downturn, so growth, downturn, recession, unemployment, employment, uh, larger demand, larger scale demand uh, and supply, and also the ways to relieve these sort of things. Um, whether it's financial uh, alleviation or, or financial relief or something like this. But uh, so for this uh, module, you will read a chapter about the Great Depression, Golden Age and Goldwell financial crisis. You will read an article about changes in, in demand and unemployment. 
and the labor market chapter uh, from the, the core book. After this, you can watch uh, a video about the fiscal policy and the stimulus. Uh, how do this work? How do this work in the in in these aggregate larger economies? And after this, we're going to read more about central the central bank and spending. Uh, and finally, inflation and unemployment. What kind of relationship do these things have? Now, after you have read all of these things, you will complete a quiz about about these articles to see where you stand uh, with these things. And finally, we go to our final module, which is about the Finnish economy at the moment, how how the corona pandemic has affected the Finnish economy, what kind of measures have been taken to relieve this, these hits and uh, facilitate recovery, and uh, what kind of things have happened there. And in this exercise, we will have an article, in this module, we will have an article, and in this article, you have to find different economic terms uh, according to the course literature, uh, and describe these terms in one sentence or two in maximum. Okay, so you will write a comment on this, you will comment on this article and um, then uh, by the deadline submit this article to me and uh, we will then assess your, your knowledge about the, the course concepts. Okay, now finally we get to apply our knowledge in an essay. So our final essay is about the Finnish economy and this recession that has happened now compared to the other recessions uh, in the history. So what kind of similarities and differences uh, can you find in these uh, recessions um, of the past and this current recession? Okay, so finally when you have completed this essay you have completed the course. Congratulations. Thank you and welcome to the Pathway Program.